here comes the thing that uh, now it's time for contract negotiations and Luca is not been delivering the results. I have a, uh, a, a dilemma here is should I keep Luca or should I drop him? So now I'm going to finish the video. I have to think about this and uh, um, yeah, so I'll see you guys for a brand new video next time and we'll see if I'm going to keep Luca. To keep or not to keep Luca Giotto is the question. Um, you know that Luca at the moment didn't score a single point um, in this championship and uh, in the last episode I was thinking if I should drop him and uh, um, you know hire a new driver. Welcome to another video guys, episode 12, my F1, my team career mode and uh, um, yeah um, you're going to see that I took the decision that I'm going to drop Luca. I know that uh, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt and uh, keeping for the rest of the season but the thing is um, he's not delivering the results and um, he's just beating both Williams cars and sometimes he's beaten by George Russell so I have to find a solution and uh, find a new driver and uh, hopefully um, this new driver is going to be uh, is going to score some points and I decided to choose the F2 world champion Nick De Vries uh, and as you can see he's half a million cheaper than Luca and he has um, four points uh, plus when it comes to um, general rating so um, I'm going to um, hire L Nick the Freeze and Luke is going to be drop of my team and I decided with, uh, to go with uh, a medium risk contract so we'll see what uh, he's going to say and uh, um, the Freeze um, is a driver for Tom Motorsport there you go now his rating has increased um, two points I can say points and now he's a 71 rating driver way better um, than Luca so we have some time left before hitting the track for the British Grand Prix and we have for the first time an invitational event unfortunately I skipped an invitational event in the, the early stages um, of this off season one is was by accident but now I'm not going to skip it and today we're going to drive I think a McLaren the, the 88 McLaren but first we're going to buy an upgrade and now we're going to skip we have a, a lot of things as you can see before hitting the track and we have a, a durability upgrade ready to be installed on the car but here we are in Suzuka the short layout um, I think uh, uh, I'm not giving um, a lot of attention to the classic cars maybe I should do a video especially with the new ones that, um, that uh, were um, brought with the Senna DLC but here we are with a beautiful McLaren driven by Etienne Senna where we won in 1988 uh, I should say yes 1998 and uh, we're going to drive around Suzuka struggling a little bit for downforce for traction this car is very very looksy-goosy because um, the turbo on this car is absolutely outrageous but now I'll let you guys enjoy this lap and uh, without me talking and uh, listen to this beautiful sound We go final corner oh that was so close am i going to be able to make the challenge 15 seconds ago that was so close to put my car into the wall as i stepped too much on the curb and the car got to stabilize but we're going to cross the line and pass the channel with six seconds to go and uh, that was really fun and like i said let me know in the comments if you want to see content with the classic cars but i think i'm going to start to do some videos maybe with the, the championship mode hub um, which I do, I do in every single game at the moment I didn't make any race but maybe I should do the classic championship or something like that but here we are back on our headquarters back to reality um, you know for back to the real business I should say and unfortunately um, one of the the engine wear upgrades uh, failed so a lot of upgrades are failing but um, yeah that's what it is what's that's the challenge of the career mode I need to invest more in uh, the facilities which I am doing but it's not enough because uh, we we've, we've been having a lot of failures when it comes to the upgrades and uh, we're going to see the performance chart and as you can see Renault jump once again has but it's just a pixel ahead and uh, we didn't bring any upgrades for the last three races because this is the thing they are always always failing um, the, the performance upgrades and uh, that doesn't help us out when it comes to increasing our performance against the other teams but uh, before he the trap uh, this is uh, um, before practice free I decided to buy a new control electronics and we're going to have a 10 place grid penalty for this one free and uh, um, I'm taking this penalty because uh, if you have a one out uh, control electronics you're going to suffer the rest of the components so uh, it doesn't seem that important but uh, it really is trust me and we're going to have a 10 place grid penalty heading for this British one free Silverstone is a track that I always like uh, especially the Magus and Beckers complex um, on the second sec which I absolutely love it the practice uh, pace has been pretty decent 
maybe we can score points, I don't know. Um, I think our pace is around P14, P15, but uh, uh, hopefully if you have some good race pace, maybe we can head to um, a good point score finish result. Maybe um, Nick the Freeze can, uh, um, you know, finish on the points in his debut. But here we are in Q1, we have to do a lot of work if we want to get um, in uh, some good position to get in the contention of scoring points in the race. Through the final couple of corners, missing the apex in the first one, this is not even a corner, it's flat out, full flat out. Um, right under the corner and it is a 126.6 I think I read the time well but as we skip forward it's just is only P20 so we're improving by one tenth of a second as we go through Maggots and Beckett um, getting a little bit of underseas I think that I've um, been struggling during this weekend I'm running with a mid uh, not even mid I think it's a uh, you know, a very balanced uh, when it comes to the wings in terms of the setup, but uh, I always find very, very tricky through Maggots and Beckett. I'm always suffering a lot um, of, uh, of uh, you know, of, of understeer and for, for stow as well. I always get tempted um, to run a bit wide to minimize, you know, um, the damage um, that I cause in terms of lap time, but uh, we're not going to improve in our, our lap, we're not going to improve by one tenth of a second and we remain for the time being in P20, but now we're going to get to our last run with one and uh, one minute to go and then join me on this lap. Already gained one tenth of a second because we got an excellent exit through the last one. It wasn't the best one um, on the first lap. We got a little bit deep through the through the right hand and now he made sure to hit the apex in the second one and make sure to hit the throttle as early as you can, feed the throttle as early as you can and open the DRS through the Wellington strain. I think I said right, I'm really bad with the um, corner names, I really need to get the hang of it and now we're going through Brooklyn, I think this is Brooklyn's and uh, he is a, um, you can take uh, many lines, I, um, I tried to take a wider line on the second lap, it wasn't uh, that worth it, maybe it's due to the tire marbles but for the time being in the mid stage of the lap we're gaining time but I don't know if it's going to be enough um, to get us in to Q3. I have some time left on the tail through Maggots and Beckett's through the flat out right hand corner. I'm forgetting that the corner name um, is going to, it's not going to be flat out for this car. Maybe it is for the Mercedes. Two turns up as we have to go to full commitment through Maggots and Beckett's and Chapel. You have to be so confident with yourself and in the car because you need the best exit speed as you can as we open the DRS, the final DRS zone of this silver tone circuit, two turns up, so I don't know if we're going to get into Q2, it seems that we're struggling some, for some pace in this qualifying session, it wasn't the case on practice, but it seems that we're struggling a three turns up as we break through the final couple of corners, this time we hit the apex, make sure a little bit of a, um, of an overseer motor, a little of a tank slapper, uh, and we're going to cross the line, we lost a bit of the cap because we step on the cap, we, st we cross the line sideways, and we crash into the wall, but unfortunately it's not going to be enough, I think we lost like a half a tenth of a second due to that spin, that was a spectacular way to cross the line but uh, um, it's going to be p19 for the strat of this british Grand Prix. so a very disappointed qualifying i'm not gonna lie um, i was expecting a way better result um, um, that was getting into uh, the second part of qualifying but uh, at least we finished ahead of our teammate nick the freeze and now he's a he's a pretty decent driver with a good rating so we have a lot of work to do if we want to score some points and uh, yeah i'm really disappointed i really like this track and uh, uh, maybe in the race maybe we're going to have some two stoppers we're going to the one stop i think we're going to start on the mediums, I don't know, we're going to see um, in the few seconds time, but uh, considering that we're starting way down the order on the field, I decided to take all the grid penalties and we're going to have a fresh full power unity uh, for this Grand Prix. So this was kind of unexpected, um, I think uh, the final uh, full kit um, of the power unit that I'm going to take, I think is going to be around Belgium and I think for, we don't have to worry um, for the rest of the scene when it comes to managing um, our power unit components. So without further ado, let's go to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. We return once again then to the home of British motorsport and the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone and it's time for the British Grand Prix. Silverstone circuit then. It's 3.6 miles long and has a total of 18 corners. And of course, is no stranger to the rain. There won't be any DRS available in these conditions, but the Wellington and Hangar Straits are still good opportunities to tuck into the slipstream and make a pass. Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today and how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes.
it's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Vettel, Alexander Albon, and Perez, Stroll, Kvyat, Ricardo, and Pierre Gasly, Sainz, Norris, Max Verstappen, and Ocon, Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Kimi Raikkonen, and Roman Grosjean, De Vries, Russell, Latifi, and Thomas. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? So here we are on the track, guys, ready to start off the British Grand Prix. Have some rain, and uh, the game is uh, advi advising us to start on the dry tires. Um, you, I'm going to tell you, I tried to switch to the intermediates because I think it's too wet uh, for the dry tires. I think this is a similar situation to the 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix. Like, it's raining a lot, but um, the best tire are the slicks and not the intermediates. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully, I don't spin in the first lap as we're getting ready for the five red lights for the British Grand Prix, one of the classes of the calendar and it slides out and away we go starting in last place a good start against both Williams cars already into P20 overtaking the Haas car of, of Roman Grosjean our teammate and the Alfa Romeo of Kimi Reichter but getting very very cautious as we go into turn one in these very slippery conditions definitely the grip is not the best one at these early stages of the British Grand Prix as we, as we dive on the inside um, on the Kimi Raikkonen and, and uh, um, he still all, um, holds on the inside and now we're going to try to go run outside of Raikkonen not just of Raikkonen but the other Haas of Max Magnussen and now this is going to be really tricky to try to overtake a run inside in these damp conditions um, at Silverstone really trying to a bit scared I'm not gonna lie I was a bit scared to um, do, um, you know um, um, try um, to um, drop the back end but uh, um, thankfully uh, half a lap done and uh, we have the car in one piece and we got some position which is good I think our teammate is starting to is trying to go run inside of Magnussen but no use and the has remains ahead um, of Nick so what I'm going to do in this Grand Prix I don't know we're starting on the soft is going to be a one stop um, so I think it's going to be the same strategy um, I think both Mercedes and Ferraris I think you could see in the race director before starting the race I think they're starting on the medium so they are in a different boat but I think uh, um, in all, all is going to be um, a one stop for everyone I think there's not going to be um, any adventures to stop but uh, um, I think this is going to be just a question um, on this Grand Prix of raw pace so it's going to be a, a difficult Grand Prix if we want to score some points maybe we're not going to do because we're in B17, we have a, a lot of places to gain and we have a, a huge train as you can see led by both racing point cars so uh, maybe this can give us a chance to start to do some overtaking which we're doing at the moment as we're going to dive on the Magnus and so the other half that we overtook was Gershon so apologies for that but he's holding on the inside now it is Giovinazzi that is uh, um, in P16 but uh, at the end of lap 1, uh, P15, so I think that is pretty decent when it comes to first laps. I think uh, we are quite strong in the first laps because uh, um, I think the AI is um, sometimes kind of slow. It just takes one line, doesn't dive bomb um, that many times on lap 1, which I think is still a problem. But uh, um, definitely the AI is getting better and better. But this is Lewis Hamilton in the mediums. And at the moment, he's definitely struggling a lot for pace, as you can see. Because he, he, one of these end plates is missing and the, the racing point of Perez managed to sail past an hour is time for Vettel overtaking and now the other racing point of Lance Stroll so Hamilton is a sitting duck in the early stages of the race he can't he, he can't do anything so if I was Hamilton I would beat and change my front wing and get some clear air and try to come back but uh, he's not doing at the moment and he's dropping plays as he's trying to regain the position on Lance Stroll Tycho will run the outside but no use because he has se uh, he has uh, um, a ser serious damage I can say that he's very serious because he's an, he's an end plate so he's going to suffer a lot and this thing is not going to be that short because he's on the medium tires so um, Hamilton Hamilton maybe um, got some contact on lap one, I don't know, but Hamilton is going to be a sitting duck in his first thing. But uh, um, like I was saying, if I was him, I would pit and, and uh, get a set of hard tires. I would get some uh, clear in that Mercedes car in order to try to regain that position. But another guy that is down the other, it is Max Verstappen. Um, I think he has he had some great penalties. He's not. Uh, any sort of damage as we go um, around the side of Esteban Ocon that's us into P14. The eye doesn't seem um, to um, get uh, the overtakes done um, in these uh, uh, first laps of the race. Uh, the DRS is enabled, so um, the, the stewards think that is safe in these conditions um, to race with the, D with the DRS enabled. But uh, now this is Daniel Kavia tried on the inside. Hamilton holds beautifully in that damage Mercedes around the side as they're going side by side through Magnus and Beckers. It's amazing to see, but Kvyat with a better grip, with a better a car with a full front wing manages to overtake the Brit which at, at the moment is being an absolutely nice
Nightmare is on race and now he's going to be sw uh, swallowed by the, the other Tom Russell of uh, P.A. Gasly, not just of the French but maybe the McLaren of Lando Norris and there he is, uh, uh, um, dive only inside, uh, I think it is Carlos Sainz, I can see by the helmet, Norris is still sitting behind the head of Verstappen at the moment, but Hamilton is at sitting that, this is absolutely painful to watch even for me that it is not on the seat of the Brit at the moment, but Hamilton can't do anything because he, uh, I think he's out of the points at the moment in P11. But, uh, um, and uh, with that, I think uh, I think Hamilton is saving a little bit of our race because uh, we manage, we are managing to keep up with Verstappen, which is pretty impressive, impressive to say the least because that is a Red Bull. So Hamilton is doing me a favor at the moment. Oh boy, that was so close. <laughs> Oh, that was so close. That was I was talking about. These conditions are definitely not the best at the moment. But uh, I think uh, the dry tires are the best tire at the moment um, in these damp condition. But uh, um, this is the risk. But uh, <laughs> I managed to save that. I managed to keep ahead of Ocon. But definitely the start the tire wear is starting to kick it in. In terms of tire temperatures, everything is fine at the moment. And uh, I'm setting personal best because that the track definitely is starting to get better and better as the stop and is going on the inside of Hamilton through stall. This is going to be a um, piece of cake for the for the Dutch and there he is is up into P12, he has a lot of work to do if he wants to score some points in the Red Bull, Hamilton is going to try to regain that position like he did on Stroll by diving on the inside but no use, he can't do anything at the moment, um, I think this is a stage of the race where the soft tires are starting to are going to start to drop a little bit but Hamilton even with the, the better medium tires maybe um, is, he, he's not able to um, fight back for Stappen and now is my time to dive down inside of a Mercedes and this is amazing the first time that overtaking a Mercedes not uh, quite legit because Hamilton has that much I go a little bit deep and Hamilton tries to regain the position but that's us into P13 so we're at a point I know but it's been a cracker of a first stint starting in last place from P13 in this car I think I think he's the best that I'm doing at the moment Haza Hamilton is trying to regain the position on inside that was so close but I managed just only just um, to close that door so now I think I'm going to pit on this lap I'm starting to suffer a lot with the tire wear first up and he's starting to pull away massively and the tire wear is on 30 odd percent in the space of nine laps I think that's pretty much so maybe I'm pushing too much for the tires but uh, what can I do um, when, when I have this car and I'm in this position I have to push as hard as I can without thinking um, of uh, um, tire management but uh, we get, we entered a little bit in hyper speed mode and uh, we are already in the pit entry the, the longest and the, the longest pit um, pit lane um, of this season and we're going to dress a brand new set of medium tires not going to have uh, any sort of rain for the remainder uh, of this Grand Prix so it's going to be dry and I think we might be able to see the sun in the closing stages so I'm really happy with this first team I don't know how it's going to be um, be the medium tires hopefully the pace is the best I don't know if you're going to be able to score some points maybe with the uh, forge the safety car or some lucky DNFs ahead of us uh, maybe that can put us in contention in contention to score some points Nick the freeze at the moment P19 and he's beating both Williams cars but uh, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because this is the first race but I have a good feeling that uh, Nick um, can deliver some good results and score um, some uh, nice points uh, for the remainder uh, of uh, the second half of the season yes it is the second half not uh, the summer break but you're already in the halfway of the season one so he has plenty of time um, he has the, he has the same time of Luca to prove um, what is worth it but uh, like I said I, I have a good feeling on him um, if I starting to training training him by investing in the training per, uh, in the tracing facility I think uh, um, um, Nick can uh, deliver some good results and hopefully he can be with us in season two I don't know but uh, getting some positions of the guys that are making um, their first and only stops of this Grand Prix we're just on lap 12 and a lot of things um, already happened but uh, um, yeah we're going to overtake uh, Nick now and overtake the Alfa Romeo and the Haas and at the moment we are in P14 and I think where we should be um, for the rest of this race I think there's one more guy to pit yes it is Hamilton because he's starting on the mediums I was forgetting so we're going to be promoted into P15 and there he is changing finally his front wing and now he's going to be a full blast um, till the end of this race because now Hamilton fitted the soft tires and uh, he's going to drop a lot of positions he's going to be um, almost at last but now he has a task that is charged through the field like he did in Monza but this time it's going to be way much harder because we don't have a safety car um, to bunch up the field so Hamilton 
Hamilton. Um, expecting from him, uh, expect a lot from him now in this second stint. And maybe he can score some good points in that Mercedes on the soft tires with a lighter car. Um, I think he can be up um, to a nice charge through the field. But we skip forward all the way forward to lap 17. The sun is starting to appear, and we're starting. Um, and it appears that we're struggling from some for some pace against Antonio Giovinazzi on the Alfa Romeo. And there is DRS open. I'm start, I'm struggling a little bit with the ERS just on 30%, and uh, Giovinazzi gets past, and uh, we've been demoted one position. So the pace on the mediums, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, okay, not that great at the moment. Definitely the pace on the soft uh, was better with the damp track. Uh, maybe it was because Hamilton was bunching up the field and that uh, gave us a chance um, to making some good overtakes. But uh, at the moment in clear air, in raw pace, uh, we can't do anything. Definitely the car is not uh, in the position yet that should be uh, at the moment in this stage of the Grand Prix. So definitely the points are out of the cut. Today I'm trying to, to, to regain the position on Giovinazzi. I'm struggling so much to keep up with him thanks to the third year. But look at the, 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 at the ERS, he's just on 5%. So I decided, okay, I'm going to let go Giovinazzi. There's nothing... Um, that I can do. If it was like Gasly or a rival uh, or our teammate, I would be battling, but uh, um, no use. We are at the points. We ha you don't have nothing to lose, so it's just to bring it home and move on to the next race, which is going to be uh, Gowerin. Talking about Hamilton, there he is, and he's making um, his way through the field, and he's trying to go run outside of Hocon. Oh, Hocon lost in the back end, as you could see. And uh, I don't know if Hocon is out of the race now. He managed to keep the car on the road. Unfortunately, I don't have the POV of Hocon at that moment, but that was so close um, to put this Grand Prix to an end. Maybe, um, it w maybe it was very close to uh, get uh, lose his wheel and get a massive crash with the Alpha and the Haas behind but this is what the race leads it was all to report as in the same stretch as Hamilton on the soft tyres against the hard tired um, um, Charles Leclerc yes number 16 yes it is Charles Leclerc on the hard tyres so definitely um, the strategy is playing some things uh, around here at this race because it seems that fitting the um, the soft tires in the last stint, um, it seems that is the best option at the moment. Leclerc couldn't do anything, and we can't do anything against Hamilton. I decided to let him go and save some fuel, save the power unit. And uh, um, yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be our race. I think we're going to be able to finish ahead of Ocon. I'm trying to keep as cons consistent as I can, but uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pushing so hard that uh, our tires are starting to go away. And on lap 23, Ocon, and we've gone a little bit onto the grass, as you can see, as we're suffering massive understeer. So this is a thing that we have to invest is uh, the is the front arrow in these uh, next few races, but Ocon is trying to go run at side through, so he has the help of the DRS. I'm leaving the uh, the, the uh, as much room as I can, try to get to as far as I can with the um, the driver that is racing for our engine supplier team. I go a little bit deep and um, through the penultimate corner, and uh, we're going to lose a little bit the back end, as you can see, and this is going to cost us a lot um, because Ocon is going to get the second bite of the cherry by trying to go run at side through the first corner. But thanks to the help of the overtake button, uh, we can. Uh, uh, we managed to stay ahead of the French and actually now Raikkonen overtook the, Re the overtook the Renault so now it's going to be much harder because um, he has a Ferrari engine at the back um, of uh, that Alfa Romeo so definitely it's going to be a much harder task and even with the ERS deploy uh, we even deploying the overtake button and rich mix I can't do anything and we are going to go back to the racing line we made contact with Ocon as you could see and uh, Ocon is going to drop a position to Roman Grosjean and unfortunately uh, we made contact with our engine supply Grand Prix he's pitting he's going to change his front Wing, so he has made the damage. I think he lost an end plate. We're going to watch the replay of his POV, but I think that was my fault. I was moving under braking and I was moving, um, you know, to the racing line. No con already was there, so um, I have to lift my hand and take the blame. And uh, that was pure stupidity. But we skip full onto, onto the last lap. Walter Bottas win the Grand Prix as Grosjean is trying to take my position around the outside. That was so close to the back end. I made a, um, a fast correction because I think we made a tiny bit of contact. But I managed to keep the car on the road. And uh, I think his P16 is going to be our position. I don't know because Grosjean is going to have uh, some good slipstream and good DRS at the back of that Ferrari engine. And uh, as you can see, there's nothing that I can do. And we're going to be demoted another position. 54% on the front left. We don't have any more ERS to the point on the straight and unfortunately it's going to be a very very disappointing P17 at the end of this British Grand Prix. I was expecting um, to battle from some good points. The pace on practice was pretty good and I really enjoyed to drive around this track but uh, definitely this is not a track for our car so yeah it was a very disappointing Grand Prix. Alright race over. Take care of the car on the way in. So, another fantastic victory for the Silver Arrows. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? 
Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day, and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend pouring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace, and our winner today showed they could do both. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. And there he is, confirmation results guys, uh, a Grand Prix without points, Hamilton finished outside the points as well for the stop and that was so close, two tenths away um, of scoring a single point, Pierre Gasly, our rival, took the final point but Valtteri Bottas wins and this is going to be big things when it comes to the championship because Hamilton was ahead of Bottas uh, with quite some gaps so this win uh, plus the fastest lap for Bottas is really important when it comes to the championship title fight but there is our results P17 and uh, Nick De Vries was out of the race I forgot to show you uh, De Vries was out of the race he had an engine fail in the closing stages so apologies for not showing and in the championship standings where we um, down into P10 so that, that is pretty good considering where our team is in the performance chart and Nick De Vries um, in the last position obviously because it is just his first Grand Prix but guys that has been episode 12 of my F1 2920 20, I said 2019, I don't know why, career mode, I hope you guys enjoyed, make sure to smash like, scratch and if you see plenty more Formula 1 content, next episode is going to be the Hungarian Grand Prix, I'm, I'm expecting some struggles because um, it's a track that requires some downforce and I think it's a department that Aka is struggling the most at the moment, but uh, uh, fingers crossed we can have a good um, second half of the season um, in this season 1, so guys, once again, appreciate you watch the whole video and I'll see you guys for a brand new video next time, but for now, it's goodbye.